The first Darksiders launched over two years ago was an unexpected delight. Combining memorable gameplay, an epic tale about the end of the world, and the unique art of Joe Matarera, it was a fun but flawed romp following the exploits of War, one of the infamous Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. THQ and Vigil Games are revisiting their dark action IP with a new horseman at the helm, and they have promised a bigger and better adventure is in store for death. This much anticipated sequel features faster movement, more weapons, and tons of loot. But do these elements create a compelling or a merely overstuffed package? Darksiders 2 casts the player as death on a mission to redeem his brother War. To do this, he will need to use the Tree of Life to resurrect mankind. His journey will take you to multiple realms inhabited by the oversized makers, various corrupted beasts, and a vengeful force from death's past. This story has a rich mythology that plays out both in motion comic segments and in-engine cutscenes. Things get pretty heavy, as you'd expect, as death travels between realms and fights for the rebirth of humanity, but Darksiders 2 is imbued with a great sense of humor. The Kinslayer makes frequent jokes and seems to relish his role as a reaper, while admitting he needs help on his quest. Folks around town call me Pup or Lad, but I prefer my own name, Carl. Pup it is, then. It's hard to talk about this game without mentioning some other great franchises, but that doesn't mean it's unoriginal. Death's progression adheres mostly to the stellar system pioneered by the Legend of Zelda series. You'll move from temple to temple, solving puzzles and earning new abilities. Often though, you'll need to enlist the help of temple-specific allies, or elements, to move forward. Navigating these spaces bears striking similarities to recent Prince of Persia games, and that's a good thing. Death is nimble and resourceful, moving fluidly through thoughtful platforming challenges. While moving between and within temples, you'll frequently fight enemies with varying strengths and strategies. Death wields scythes and a secondary weapon with one attack button assigned to each. Creating combos with two weapon types, evades, and aerial attacks is fast and fun. Thoughtfully switching between weapons and abilities pays dividends. Add to that enemies and treasure chests that reward you with armor, money, weapons, and amulets, among other things, that allow you to customize death with an impressive variety of stat boosts and weapon combinations. It's easy to say this is God of War meets Zelda meets Prince of Persia, but that sells this game short. RPG elements permeate every layer of this experience and make even the time between your main objectives potentially lucrative and frequently very fun. The music in Darksiders 2 changes with each temple and always sets a dark but sometimes heroic mood. Some haunting vocals are featured and somber melodies add to the lonely feel of Death's journey. Sound effects feature a great dynamic range, making heated battles sonically more and more intense as you pull off increasingly devastating moves. Everything has a creepy or overpowered tone, making even mundane occurrences like closing doors seem brutal. Characters speak with varying accents and levels Where of seriousness, life? helping keep dialogue life. amusing to listen to. <laughs> Death, especially, switches between low angry tones and growling self-satisfied vocalizations that give him a lot of character. Vulgrim. What brings you crawling out of the shadows? A lot of attention has been paid to the voice acting in this game, and it shows. The cast of Darksiders 2 are fully aware of the weight of their actions, but don't come across as overly grim. That's quite an achievement for a game starring a Reaper. Darksiders 2 has a visual presentation that focuses heavily on character design, style, and scale. Matarera's fingerprints are all over this game, and it has a very unique look. Characters' oversized muscles feature prominent outlines, oversized weapons feature prominently, and everything just looks cool. 
As you change Death's armor loadout, his appearance changes appropriately, which means you won't be looking at exactly the same character model the whole time. It's just a nice touch. Environments aren't quite as detailed as Death, his enemies, or NPCs, but they are thoughtfully constructed and often very large. Seeing an enormous one-eyed beast wrapped around the immense tree of life, or seeing an objective that's a football field away and 20 stories up, lends a truly epic feel to Death's adventure. This game is not trying to look photorealistic, opting instead for a sort of hand-painted style that proudly reveals its comic-style roots. There is a great sense of atmosphere and everything looks intense and serious. Some vistas are certainly more technically impressive than others, but they all present the player with something interesting to look at. Animations are fast and fluid, highlighting death's speed and lethality. The frame rate will dip sometimes when battles grow especially overwhelming, and sometimes you'll find yourself crawling in midair. These things don't happen constantly, but there isn't as much polish here as I would have liked to see. Darksiders 2 may not feature the most impressive texture work or lighting, but it definitely gets extra points for its sheer artistry and unity of style. Controlling Death as he navigates, contemplates, and eviscerates is mostly fluid and intuitive. Jump toward a wall head-on and you'll scramble up its surface. Run and jump at a wall at an angle and you'll perform a wall run. The only real problem with running and jumping is that it's not always clear what you can climb or jump over. Ledge's death can grip always look different from ones he can't, but that difference can sometimes be subtle. More than once I found myself jumping at chest-high objects and able to climb over them, only to find that another section of the same object could be climbed. Sometimes invisible walls were to blame, but often I just wasn't doing something exactly the way it was designed to be done. You can train with certain NPCs to add new moves and combos to Death's repertoire, and you can also unlock the ability to summon undead allies, perform teleporting sword dashes, and wield spectral scythes, to name a few. These abilities can be triggered with mappable button combinations. They are fueled by Wrath, which can be refueled by hitting right on the D-pad if you have any necessary potions. You can also quickly use health potions in battle by hitting left on the D-pad. Combine this with trying to time dodges, juggling enemies, and using combos that see death switching between primary and secondary weapons. There is a lot going on here combat-wise, but controlling it is a lot less complex than it sounds. There is a flow to battle, it just sometimes gets a little too hectic, with multiple enemies attacking at once. As death gains new abilities, the puzzles grow more and more complicated, leading to some very creative head scratchers that can sometimes frustrate, but are never cheap. Winning a confrontation, moving through a series of puzzles, and eventually fighting a dungeon boss is very fun, if somewhat repetitive. The overall structure of this game may borrow elements from other greats, but its pacing and execution are both very good. Going straight through Darksiders 2's story on normal difficulty will take around 20 hours to complete. You'll traverse a couple large world maps and a couple small ones on your journey. There are several temples, side quests, and collectibles to enjoy, making fully completing this game a much longer affair. You can also take on challenges in the Crucible for extra rewards, and there are always plenty of enemies to fight. Beating the game's final boss unlocks a Game Plus mode, giving you even more reason to come back. Simply put, there is a lot of content here, but much of it revolves around fighting enemies and finding collectibles. Even if you don't come back to Darksiders 2, there is enough here to warrant a purchase for anyone who likes interesting combat, thoughtful puzzles, and original art.